Hi, and welcome to your Morris Animal Refuge Foster Orientation. This presentation will introduce you to the basics of fostering and how to get started. Please follow the link at the end to take a quick quiz and officially become an MAR foster parent. First and foremost, thank you for signing up to be a foster. Each animal we get into foster care opens up a kennel at our shelter for a new animal in need. Without foster parents like you, we couldn't save lives. We'll start by going over basic commitments and expectations. One, time and travel. You should have reliable transportation to and from the shelter for routine and urgent care and spay and neuter surgery. You should also dedicate time towards promoting your animal for adoption. How well we promote an animal predicts how quickly they'll find their forever home. Two, communication. It's important that you keep open lines of communication and carefully follow directions from the MAR team. You should also respond to check-ins from staff and adoption inquiries promptly. We're always here to help, but we can't do our jobs if we don't know something's wrong. Three, space. If you have resident animals, we require that your foster is separated from them for a minimum of two weeks. Our shelter animals come from a variety of backgrounds, including from outdoors, and even healthy looking animals can be carrying illnesses. Also make sure to pet proof your home and supervise your fosters, especially around children and once you start introducing them to resident animals. Four, care. This goes without saying, but we expect you to be kind to your foster and promote learning. Only use rewards-based training techniques, which means no aversive methods like prong collars, choke chains, spray bottles, loud noises, or scolding. Finally, it's required that you keep your foster cat indoors and your foster dog on leash when outdoors at all times. Dog parks and other off-leash areas are strictly off limits. Even the best animal shelters are stressful places for animals. So in an ideal world, everyone could be in foster care, but realistically space in foster care is limited. So we prioritize the following cases. Baby animals, which includes kittens with and without moms, as well as puppies. The time and care needed for kittens largely depends on if mom is with them and how old the kittens are. Newborn bottle babies need to be fed every two to four hours and stay in foster care for two months. Kittens and puppies who are eating on their own might only need two weeks in foster care. Animals with medical issues may be looking for short or long-term foster. Some animals just need foster care for a few weeks to kick something like a cold. Others might have chronic issues or special needs and are expected to stay in foster care a little longer. Some animals have a very difficult time adjusting to the shelter. They may be scared and shut down or overly excitable, exhibiting behaviors like barking, humping, nipping, and swatting. These animals typically do great in foster care since they're so used to a home environment and do best being adopted straight out of foster care. This can take a few weeks to a few months. To give our dogs some time to de-stress, we also offer day trip and overnight foster options. Long-term residents are our last category of animals who we typically promote for foster care. Most of the time, they're great animals who just get overlooked. A break from the shelter or a place to crash until they're adopted is a great way to give these animals some love. The shelter has many staff members, but these folks will be your primary contacts as a foster. The foster team is made up of Elisa and Bree, and they can assist you with all non-medical issues, including behavior support, general care questions, and help promoting your animal for adoption. There's no such thing as a silly question, and they're here to support you on your foster journey. The medical team is made up of our vet nurses, Jess and Elsie, as well as several veterinarians who visit the shelter on a weekly basis. They're the experts when it comes to the health of your foster animal, and they should be contacted directly when it comes to any medical concerns. Please take a minute to pause this video and add their numbers to your contacts before moving on. Our main shelter is located in Center City at 1242 Lombard Street. This is where you'll pick up animals and where you'll go for clinic appointments and surgery drop-offs. Keep in mind that we don't have a parking lot, so if you're coming for an appointment, leave yourself enough time to find street parking. The refuge is open every day of the week from 12 to 5 p.m. to fosters. We're closed to the public on Thursdays, but fosters can still schedule appointments for medical treatments. On Wednesdays, we're open until 7 p.m. When it comes to supplies, we'll provide whatever we can, but we rely on donations, so it never hurts to prep on your own in case we're running low on something. Let us know before your first foster pickup if there are any supplies you need so we can check the shelter for them. The following list is included in your foster handbook for you to reference as you prepare for your foster. Some items like food and water bowls, toys, and bedding are essential, while others are optional and can provide a nice way to de-stress for your foster. Other items are species specific, so plan accordingly. As you might imagine, all of this bouncing around is very stressful for our animals. 
That's why we ask fosters to create a decompression space to give their animal a quiet and safe place to adjust. Step one, choose a low traffic or unused room in the home to set up your animal's home base, which includes their food, water, toys, and a cozy dark spot to rest. This can simply be a carrier or crate with the door removed or secured open. Make sure the space is fully separated from any resident animals. Step two, pet proof the rest of your home. Remove anything valuable, breakable, and chewable. Move any plants and soil out of reach. Secure windows and lids, including garbage bins and toilet bowls. And finally, block electrical outlets and wires. Step three, you may need to do some fine tuning depending on the animal you're bringing home. For cats, it's important to block off small spaces they can squeeze into and get stuck in. Cats can fit into any space as small as their heads, and these spaces are especially tempting for curious kittens and shy adult cats. You always want to be able to reach your cat in case of an emergency. A large dog crate or soft-sided playpen can be a great way to keep kittens safe. Puppies need a space with all their essentials to stay safe when they can't be supervised. If you're fostering a puppy, we'll tell you more about setting up a playpen. Some animals will have additional needs that are unique to them. We'll discuss these further when matching you with an animal. This handy cheat sheet will give you a rundown of what you absolutely should and shouldn't do to set up your foster for success. It's also available in your foster handbook. When you get home, take your dog on a short neighborhood walk in a low traffic area before entering the home. If you're bringing home a cat, take them straight to their decompression space. Don't make any stops along the way. Only introduce your animal to members of the household for the first one to two weeks. Allow the animal to approach you and go at their pace. Make sure they have a comfortable place to retreat to if they need it. Anxious energy can be channeled into play or mental stimulations like food puzzles. If you're bringing home a dog, keep walks short and only use essential cues for the first 48 hours. Manage the environment to reduce chances of problem behaviors occurring. The best ways to do this are to thoroughly puppy proof your home and to keep a dropped leash attached to the dog at all times. Some things to avoid include letting your animal roam the house unsupervised, especially with resident animals. After two weeks in a separate space, refer to our provided resources on introductions. Never leave your animal unsupervised around children, even after the first few weeks. Respect the animal's personal space, so avoid hugs and kisses, taking food and toys from them, and entering their crate. Hold off on any training. Training is a wonderful way to build a bond, but you want to be sure your animal has time to relax and get into that learning mindset. In the same vein, don't occupy every minute of the animal's day with exciting activities. Make sure they have plenty of time to do quiet activities like food puzzles and take lots of naps. If you're bringing home a dog, keep their environment low key and avoid pet stores, heavily trafficked neighborhoods and parks, friends' houses, and other unfamiliar places for the first one to two weeks. All animals will have slightly different timelines for decompressing once they arrive at home, but the following is a good rule of thumb. In the first three to seven days, your animal is overwhelmed by the newness, so keep your home calm and quiet. Don't have friends over to meet your animal yet and limit dog's exposure to new places. Stick with short walk-along meets with any resident dogs and keep resident cats totally separated. Some dogs may have accidents, even if they're house trained. In the first three to four weeks, your animal is settling in and showing more of their true personality. It helps your animal feel confident and well-adjusted to keep a consistent routine. Follow instructions for integration with resident animals and get in touch with us if you're noticing any undesirable behaviors. This is a great time to work with them using positive reinforcement training. After three months, your animal is fully settled and has built a trusting relationship with you. They know they're safe at home and feel fully integrated into the household. You're starting to see and enjoy all the nuances of their character. Animals can't speak to us using words, so for our safety and theirs, it's important that we pay attention to what their bodies are telling us. An animal who normally won't escalate to aggression can be a bit more volatile when stressed, so it's on us to show them respect and to be attentive. If you notice any of the following, consider ending your interaction and giving the animal time to relax in their decompression space. Classic stress signals in dogs include licking their lips, yawning, pinning back their ears and tucking their tail, not taking treats, and moving away from you or the stressor. Cats will also lick their lips when stressed, and additionally, you might notice dilated pupils, ears pinned back, low or flicking tail, and hiding. The best way to approach any animal is to avoid eye contact, let the animal approach you, and to offset your body so you're not facing them directly. You can also toss yummy treats towards the animal so they learn to associate you with good things. 
A great way to relieve stress is to practice what's sometimes called banning the bowl. Using food puzzles and training sessions to feed your animal, feline or canine, burns energy, works their brain, relieves stress and boredom, and builds your relationship. Some of the best food puzzles are easy to DIY with things you might have at home already. Just make sure to start with easier puzzles and build up in difficulty. As always, if you need support with a behavior issue or in general, don't wait and email us right away. If you don't think you'll be able to manage your foster's behavior long term, let us know ASAP so we can seek out another foster to take over their care and avoid a stressful return to the shelter. When working on training and behavior, keep in mind that we only endorse rewards-based training techniques at Morris. This means rewarding your animal for good behavior and not using aversive methods like prong collars, spray bottles, or scolding. Aversive techniques have been proven to cause stress and to be ineffective at encouraging good behavior. If you're fostering a dog, check out our behavioral resources collection for even more behavior tips. All veterinary care must be provided at Morris unless otherwise instructed. Morris cannot reimburse any costs incurred when seeking or receiving care from off-site providers without the explicit consent of Morris management. In the event of an after-hours emergency, refer to the emergency contact schedule in your foster handbook or in the foster email auto-reply. Emergencies include urgent medical concerns, animal bites, animal fights, and missing or loose animals. In general, make sure to closely follow the directions from our medical team when caring for your animal. This includes quarantine and disinfection procedures, dietary instructions and restrictions, instructions for administering medications, and feeding and care of bottle babies. Do not administer any medications or supplements without approval from our team, and shoot us an email if you have any questions. The health cheat sheet is included in your foster handbook, and it's a handy guide to determine if your adult animal is experiencing an emergency. In a non-emergency, monitor the situation and email your observations to our medical team. We may instruct you to continue monitoring or sign up for a clinic visit. Non-emergencies include sneezing, nasal or eye discharge, and isolated instances of vomiting and diarrhea. In an emergency, bring your animal straight to the shelter if we're open or call the on-duty team member after hours. Emergencies include severe vomiting and diarrhea, unresponsiveness, difficulty breathing, and bleeding or physical trauma. This is a non-exhaustive list that's helpful for identifying emergencies in adult animals. If you're fostering a kitten or puppy and something isn't right, your animal will probably need medical attention sooner since babies are more fragile than adults. Please refer to your foster handbook for a more specific list of kitten and puppy emergencies. Clinic appointments for routine vaccinations, preventatives, and non-emergency treatments are scheduled through the online calendar linked in this slide. Unless you're experiencing an emergency, an appointment must be made to bring your animal into clinic. Puppies and kittens receive vaccinations and preventatives every two to three weeks. Do your best to keep track of your animal's age and schedule clinic appointments in a timely manner. Regular booster vaccines and preventatives are crucial to maintaining your foster animal's health. An outline of the typical vaccine and preventative schedule may be found in your foster handbook. For more involved medical care, our team may have you schedule your clinic visit when our veterinarian is in. They will send you a separate link for scheduling your appointment. Many of our animals need to be spayed and neutered before being adopted. Some animals may be in need of other surgeries or sedated procedures. To schedule your animal's surgery, email the foster and medical teams. Our surgeries are always at our 1242 Lombard Street location. Drop-off is between 8.45 and 9 a.m. and pickup is between 3 and 4 p.m. Please do not feed your foster animal after midnight the night before surgery or the morning the day of. All animals must be altered before their adoption can be finalized. Puppies and kittens can be altered at eight weeks and over two pounds. Adults can be altered ASAP as long as they're healthy and not on any medications. After picking up an animal for foster care, you'll be sent an email invite to sign up for Maddie's Pet Assistant. Maddie's Pet Assistant will then ask you to complete follow-up surveys at regular intervals throughout the animal's stay in your care. This is extremely helpful in identifying areas where you may need support from MAR staff, plus it provides useful tips along the way. When fostering, our mantra is goodbye is the goal. It's our expectation that fosters will promote their animals for adoption. Fostering isn't a trial adoption, and if you feel like you might not be able to let an animal go, we recommend visiting the shelter during our adoption hours. After you've gotten to know your animal, start sending over promotional content. 
This includes a three to four sentence bio, pictures and videos in a shareable Google Photos album, and an email address by which adopters can reach you directly. Whether you're social media savvy or totally new to it, we recommend making an Instagram account for fostering and tagging at Morris Animal Refuge in your posts and stories. It's quick and easy to post a photo or video every few days and tag us. We'll do the heavy lifting from there. MAR practices what's called open adoptions. We ask our fosters to meet potential adopters with an open mind and provide them support before, during, and after the adoption process to find them their best fit and create a successful placement. This is an opportunity to provide informational resources so that community members are able to be great animal caregivers, whether it's to a Morris animal or not. Like we already talked about, the first step is to promote your animal and get them out there. Make sure everyone and their aunt knows how great they are. Follow our tips and have fun showing off your new foster buddy. When the adoption inquiries start rolling in, get to know potential adopters that reach out by asking questions about their lifestyle and what they're looking for in a new friend. Let them know your foster's behavioral and medical quirks, as well as any management that's worked for you. If it's not a fit, direct the adopter to other animals in MAR's foster care who might be better suited for them. Unsure if an adopter is the right fit for your foster and need a little support to figure it out? don't know other foster animals to point them to, just shoot us an email and we can help. When you have a great fit for your foster who's ready to move forward with adoption, email us to let us know. Our team will take it from there. After the adopter has signed the adoption contract, you're free to hand over your foster. And don't forget to take a going home photo to share with us. Finally, follow up post adoption. You know your foster best. Check in with the adopter after the first three days and three weeks. Sometimes being there to provide a little extra support makes the difference between a successful forever placement and a return to the shelter. So what now? To start fostering, keep an eye on animals in need in one of three ways. One, email blasts. We'll send out periodic blasts to our fosters, letting you know about individual animals seeking foster care. Two, the Morris Animal Refuge Fosters Facebook group. Our Facebook group is a place for fosters to share success stories, seek support from other fosters when dealing with minor issues, and get real-time updates on animals seeking foster care. Three, Trello. Trello is an online bulletin board where you can see all the animals who are currently seeking foster care. Simply click on the animal's card to find out more about them. Each card has labels indicating any medical issues, behaviors the animal needs support with, and previous history from the home. When you see an animal you'd like to foster, simply email us at foster at morrisanimalrefuge.org. If you're ready to foster but don't see the right fit for you, feel free to reach out anyway and tell us more about what you're looking for. We'll review the animal's complete history with you to be sure it's a fit and schedule a day and time for you to pick them up from Morris. Let us know when scheduling what supplies you'll need to start with so we can have that ready to go for you. When you pick up, you'll just need to present your photo ID. Please do not bring resident animals when picking up. If you would like to do a dog meet with the foster dog and your resident dog, let us know ahead of time. Thank you for completing the MAR foster orientation. Your final task is to take a quick quiz to review the material and officially become a Morris foster parent. Once you get 100% on your quiz, we'll add you to our foster email lists and approve your Facebook request. You can take the quiz as many times as you want. If you have any lingering questions, email foster at morrisanimalrefuge.org. Thanks again. We're excited to support you on your fostering journey.